Hello there and welcome. It's been about three days since I've been here in Sweden. If we're counting from zero, I've been here three days. Um, zero being the day I arrived and uh, three being today. Huh. Well, the good news is that it's light which means that this doesn't look like it did last night, which must have been a bit of a kind of steady cam version of the Blair Witch Project. Um, but um, it is kind of getting dark. I imagine the time's about six o'clock, really. Um, yeah, that seems a reasonable guess. And I'm here in Sweden. I was going to give it a better answer as to where, but I'm not really that sure. Uh, well, I know where I am on the map, just actually being able to verbalise that. I'm halfway between Abisca Jura Stuganana, Abisca Jura cabins, and the cabins at the other end of this valley. But today has been difficult. I mean, oh my god, difficult. Uh, so, this is partly still to do with my rucksack weighing a fuck ton. You know, that's, that's, that's the term, a fuck ton. Or maybe two fuck tons. Or maybe just fucking tons. Because it's really bad. Like, you know you've probably kind of overloaded it when you're having to stop every kind of hour, an hour would be a nice, every like kilometre and a half or so, and you can make good time on those kilometre and a half, but then having to stop for some time to kind of rest your back is just annoying, especially when you know that like the rest of your body is actually quite capable of, of handling it. Um, it's quite frustrating. And, and this path, I mean, I'm not on the current Kung in here, the King's Trail. Um, I've taken a, a path off it. I'm going down to the other end of this valley. Um, today's the first day I haven't been on it. I'm going down to the end of this valley um, where there's these other cabins and then there's a route across the hills. It's going to be interesting because, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But um, I'm keen to kind of... Well, I was keen to get off the Kung Schleden to see what it was like not being on like a national hiking trail and this path seemed relatively well marked on the map so I headed off down here but it's been tough today because I've not really had a problem finding the path but the path's been difficult to follow if that makes sense so along the Kungsleden whenever it was kind of uh, or at least the section I've done so far Wherever it's been challenging in any way, um, either swampy, and you know, this is northern Sweden, there are lots of swamps, um, live with it, um, or, or rocky, they'd put the, up the, uh, the wooden planking that you can just walk over, that to be honest makes it all like a bit of a breeze. Um, and along this section of path, there have been bits which have been swampy and there are bits which have been rocky and bumpy and overgrown and quite overgrown and really overgrown that have been more difficult and certainly not planked in any way. In fact, barely marked. I've not had a problem finding it, but they've still been barely marked. And kind of, I've been glad that I've kind of, oh yeah, it's just, when you're having to kind of fight your way through, there are kind of shrubs growing over each side of the path. And you know the path's here, and the path's not any other way, um, but you're still gonna have to kind of fight your way through. That's a bit annoying. And that would have slowed me down even if the rucksack kind of hadn't kept me stopping every now and then. So, yeah, I mean, at the moment, I'm making about 10 kilometers a day, which is... 
which I shouldn't compare to other random things, but I find quite disturbing considering that, you know, I can easily run two kilometers, sorry, 10 kilometers in less than two hours. Like that's not even, you, I can walk, practically walk 10 kilometers in two hours in on tarmac. Um, but with a kind of 20 kilogram rucksack and with a path that one has to fight one's way along, I guess it's a bit different. So when I woke up this morning, it was raining. Well, actually the rain started about kind of 3 a.m. I mean, this is one of the interesting things, actually. It goes to dark at about kind of 6, 7 p.m. And to be honest, that's fine because by that time I've had quite enough. But um, certainly when you're carrying a rucksack as a significantly weighty as I am. But one of the kind of interesting impacts is that I go to bed when it gets dark. I mean, hell, I'm not gonna fuck around. Um, which is annoying, because, yeah, I'll get that to get to that. Um, what was I saying? Yes, so, I go to bed when it gets dark, and so I've been sleeping kind of from when it gets dark, maybe going to bed about 7 or 8 p.m., until when I get up, which is 8 or 9 a.m. That's not to say that I'm asleep the whole time, you know. If you're forced to lie in bed for like 13 hours a day, or well not forced, but choose to lie in bed for 13 hours a day, then you're just not going to be able to sleep the whole time unless you're a baby. Um, but... I've certainly been getting more sleep over the past few days than I've had kind of for a long time, over a, a serious amount of time. Uh, and that's a good thing. So when I woke up this morning, it was raining and rain sucks. So I dropped on all my waterproof gear. I mean, to be fair, the tent's soaking on the inside and the outside, on the inside from condensation, even though like, I've taken all the precautions I possibly can and on the outside because you know it's raining um, so I was just like wrapping the tent away in the rain and that was grim but then it stopped raining so that was less grim but I was still wearing full waterproofs so I kept them on the whole day which considering the amount of mud and wet undergrowth I've had to fight my way through it's probably a good thing um, but the rain was snow on some of the, uh, I mean, on some of the hills, and relatively lower hills around here. Um, it was kind of maybe at... So I reckon I'm probably at 400 metres here. Um, and you won't be able to really see the hill behind me because it's kind of blurred. But um, I reckon that's probably kind of six to 800 metres. So maybe kind of 400 metres higher. Yeah, I can do maths too. Um, I can't be bothered to convert those to feet. So, yeah. Um, when I, so the plan for, to, for kind of on, go, on onwards um, is to walk down this trail. It's about 10 kilometres to the huts at the, well, not the end of this valley, but quite close to the end. And actually... It's just a kilometre from there to the Norwegian border, so I might walk over to the Norwegian border and walk across it and walk back just so I can say I've done it. Uh, though it won't be the most thrilling thing that I've ever done, to be honest. Um, I might do that, I might not. It'll see how tired and bored I am tomorrow evening. But, yeah, I'm going to walk down to the hut at the end of this valley um, and hopefully... Um, stay there or around there or something there for a night um, I've realised that I've got a slight problem which is that whilst I thought about provisioning food quite carefully and I've thought about provisioning cameras quite carefully um, I didn't really consider how I was provisioning fuel carefully now this isn't the match thing, this isn't the kind of lighter thing, this isn't to do with me stealing half a matchbox this is to do with 
actual volume of meths that I will use cooking shit. And by shit, I mean food. So... I have gone through about half of my 500 milliliter bottle of meths. And today is day three. That's quite worrying. Um, so I threw away one uh, burner's worth of liquid whilst I was trying to determine what the problem with the burner not starting was. And various things, but that's still day three, 250 milliliters gone, 250 milliliters left. Um, that's not sustainable. Um, so I'm guessing I'm going to be relying on huts to some degree in some direction because otherwise, um, yeah, I don't really have uh, any way of um, like heating my dried food which is quite silly. Um, it's really stupid that I've made the miscalculation, to be honest, because, um, yeah, I could have worked it out. Or I could have worked out that 500 mil wasn't going to be enough. I also could have worked out that those, that I should have, like, I should actually invest in a proper bottle for meths. Because meths is a vile stuff. I mean, actually... Most of my kit smells of meths at the moment, including one of my friends um, very eloquently suggested that I would, was going to smell after several days of hiking in Sweden. You know, I'm sure I smell. I, I'm, I'm certain I smell. Um, I don't really... You, you don't care that I smell because you can't smell me, but um, the only thing that I know I smell of is meths, um, which is quite grim because, you know, meths is one of the most vile smells in the world after you've been subjected to it for like more than 10 minutes um i quite liked the smell before before i kind of felt like i was covered in it uh, another thing that i could have worked out was that those little uh, plastic bottles weren't really adequate for carrying meths so uh in the aeroplane uh on the way over um whilst in my bag in the hold um presumably there must have been some like decompression given the altitude or something and so basically a kind of fine mist of meths was sprayed all over the inside of my bag and so basically everything has odor meths kind of odor toilet the meths kind of dunked on it like just brilliant i mean i don't know if you've ever stuck your nose in meths for kind of several days I wouldn't recommend it but um, it's pretty bad smelling um, I wouldn't really wouldn't recommend it if you've got the choice um, I had the choice and um, yeah I wouldn't take it that way again um, so yeah going to be a bit of a walk to these huts tomorrow hopefully the terrain will be nicer but I'm not really imagining it going to be that nice that much nicer I'm not really imagining my bag's going to be that much lighter um, it'd be quite nice to get to the huts and be able to kind of stay in a hut at a night because well in a tent it's relatively cool at night um, not inside my sleeping bag, but you know, there's a difference between in your sleeping bag and out of the sleeping bag, and it's noticeable. Um, and it'd be quite nice to see if I could be bothered to uh, like get up, let's say, 10 pm or something whilst it's dark, um, and see whether I could see any of the uh, aurora. But um, we'll see. I mean, it depends on it being clear, and right now it's not really clear. Um, but you know, right, right now tonight, um, once I crawl into my tent, I will be crawled into my tent until it gets light again. It's as simple as that. It's just too cold and bothersome to be bothering about climbing in and out of a tent when one could possibly see, possibly, some light 
at night, but you probably won't because it's cloudy. <sighs> yeah. So, I'll let you catch up with me later when hopefully stuff will have happened. Bye!